In this demonstration we'll see how to configure Outlook on the web options and policies. So for anybody that's used the previous version of Exchange, what we now have is we have Outlook on the web. So for all intents and purposes, it's OWA, Outlook Web Access. So what we're going to do here is we've just come into our servers node within Exchange Admin Center. We've highlighted Lonnie X1, which is our Exchange server, and we'll go to Virtual Directories. Now within here, we're just going to come down to our OWA default site, and we're going to do that for lon-ax1, and then we're just going to select our edit button. And then that'll bring us into the ability to edit the settings. So just on the general page, what we have here is where server lon-ax1, we can see the server version, default website, Outlook Web App version currently, it says here Exchange 2013, it's not, it's 2016. What we've also got as well is we've got the last modified time and we can specify our internal and our external URL. So we're going to modify these to point to mail.datum.com. So the internal URL will be used by internal users. External URL, as it says here, this will be used by clients that connect from outside the firewall. The next tab we have is the authentication tab. So in the authentication tab, we're specifying our authentication methods. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use form-based authentication. So a user is going to have to type in, in our case, a datum backslash username, or we could specify user principal name, so user at datum.com, or we could specify username only, and we could specify the logon domain. Up at the top here, if we don't want to use forms-based authentication, which is secured with SSL, we could use either basic authentication, don't want to use that, that's plain text passwords, digest authentication for Windows domain servers, or we could use integrated Windows authentication. This would be maybe one that we would use with the integrated Windows authentication on the internal network. However, I'm just going to leave the forms-based authentication. The next thing we have here is we have features. So then features, we're specifying what features are allowed by our end users. Now, what I don't want my end users to use in the case of my little, uh, demo lab here is I don't want them to be able to use journaling and I don't want them to e uh, be able to use themes either. So I think we'll turn that off as well. But we can see things like communication management. They can use instant messaging, text messaging, unified messaging, fairly self-explanatory. If I highlight the more options and expand this up, this just gives me additional things like allowing users to change their password and so on down the list. So this is where we can specify exactly what features our end users are allowed when they access their Outlook on the web. Then what we'll do is go for file access. So the purpose of the file access is to specify whether or not users can uh, access attachments from the internal network. So on a public or shared computer, we will give them direct file access and private computers as well. We'll also give them direct file access. So this is allowing users to have attachments coming from internally within the corporate network rather than just from their local PC. So now we've modified these, we'll just select save. Next thing we'll have a look at here is configuring Outlook web app policy. So the purpose of policy is we can then associate that policy with users and the users will get something different to what we've set as a default setting. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to come to our permissions tab. On our permissions tab, the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to come for an Outlook web app policy. Then what we're going to do is just click on our plus. And then in the wizard, we need to now give this policy a name. So we're going to call this one remote users policy. And then what we're going to do is we're not going to allow our remote users to use instant messaging. We're not going to allow them to use text messaging. So we'll come down here. We'll also go to our more options. Now we'll scroll down a bit here. So one of the things we won't allow them to do either is we won't allow them to recover deleted items. So and we won't allow them to modify their themes. And finally, for a public or shared computer, we won't give them direct file access either. Now that's done, we'll select save, and that'll then save off our new policy. Now that's saved off, we now need to allocate it to a user. So we'll come to recipients, and what we're going to do is we're going to allocate it to Alex. So we'll come to Alex, we'll just edit Alex's settings. We'll come to mailbox features. And then we'll just scroll down, and what we're looking for here is we're just looking for email connectivity. And then what we'll do is we'll just view the details. 
and then browse through. And what we'll do is we'll just select our remote user's policy and select OK. Save that off. And then save off Alex's settings. And that's the end of this demonstration of modifying OWA policies. Thank you.